There's a lot more that we do as filmmakers than just press record on a fancy video camera, right? What's going on you guys? This is Sean here at Venture Art House and we're going to be doing our first ever cinematography breakdown, our latest music video production for Drew Max Dreaming. So rather than waste a good story, let's go over how we created this music video, what we shot it with, the knowledge, the tools and everything and all that jazz. So number one, cameras, what were we shooting with? We shot a two camera setup. Two. Two of them. Balling. Two. Uh, a cam was gonna be a Red Raven, um, which was gonna be our gimbal camera. And B camera was going to be uh, my buddy Mike's Red Epic Dragon 6K. We out here, Red Dragon. Now the reason that we opted for the Dragon as the B camera was that it does not have internal scratch audio for us to sync. Uh, I know that you can get the wooden camera attachment, it just wasn't in the time and in the cards to get it on there. Um, as far as lenses for this one, we knew that the day was gonna be pretty fast paced, uh, so I ended up uh, opting for the Sigma Cine Zooms, which are a great affordable rental option here in Los Angeles. Um, so you have two lenses in that kit, you have the 18 to 35 T2, and you have the 50 to 100 T2. So these lenses are just great because number one, it, they had an EF mount, so I was able to put them on the Raven. And reason number two is they just have a great zoom range with an amazing constant T2 aperture, uh, which really helped us get the shallow depth of field that I wanted for this shoot. Um, and we paired them with some ProMist filters. Now each scene was a little bit different. In some scenes, I was pretty much only using a 1 8th ProMist, and in others, uh, I ended up stacking a 1 8th and a 1 4th uh, to really sell the dream factor that the artist Drew wanted in the whole choreography scene. Now, let's talk about lighting, the next thing. Um, we had four different lighting setups and four different scenes inside this music video. So number one, we'll go over the, the actual lighting for the bedroom choreography scenes. And this was a very, very simple lighting setup. Uh, and we utilized a goalpost kind of grip setup for this. So we had the goalpost, which was at each end of the frame. We had two combo stands going up with uh, some menace arms and uh, speed rails overhead. And in the center, we had an Ari Sky panel S60 with a snackback Chimera on there just for some really nice, soft, major key light over our uh, talent. Instead of going straight down, we would create a little bit of harsh shadow if we did it that way, kind of like an evil look. We just angled the sky panel just to make a nice, soft fill, and that's what you're seeing right here. Uh, later on, just a few seconds into the video, as the second choreographer comes into the video, we see a light key on in the background, just giving us this really dramatic um, backlit uh, type of look and that's just the Lico right in the background and to carry that light a little bit more Soften up our atmosphere. We just used the old Hollywood trick of some haze and it just really really did wonders uh, The last two things in this scene are going to be uh, two practicals uh, the lamps on each side of the bed and What I did is I didn't have time to just get like some quasar practicals or something So I picked up some 70 watts from Home Depot uh, and I took some CTO and if you don't know what that is It stands for color temperature Temperature orange uh, and they're kind of like they're, they're gels essentially and we gel the lights that way so we're getting this really warm look uh, and it just created a nice cohesive color look throughout the whole entire video you have the green on the vintage lamps the orange glow from the lights and then the deep deep red of the bed and it all just came together so nicely uh, the last thing that I did here was I actually faked the camera's white balance or incorrectly set the white balance to 8200 Kelvin I believe if I'm not mistaken something really really high like that and we balance the sky panel above at 2700 Kelvin which is around tungsten uh, so that's how we were able to achieve this really really warm look now on the next setup we went for the whole TV room and this one was very very simple uh, in this room we basically just opted for a quasar right overhead, uh, four foot out of frame. We put a little bit of gaff tape on it to flag off any spilling of the light. And this helped to just kind of uh, give the, the TV a little bit of, um, of key on the top. So it kind of edged it almost like a hair light so that it didn't just fall off into the black background. Um, and then we use that sky panel again another time um, just right over uh, our talent just nice and soft we dimmed it down same thing with the uh, 
uh, with the snapback Chimera on there just for that soft, soft lighting. And then with the Quasar, we just had it just flicker. Um, and then just to get this really nice, cool blue look, I just balanced the camera at about 4,200. So that's how we achieved that whole scene. Um, next from there, we moved on to, uh, there's a scene where Drew is lip syncing, a performance scene where the whole entire room is red. And it's funny, a lot of times when you're going through pre-production, you think to yourself that you want a certain look, uh, but once you get on set, things change a little bit more. So we had initially opted to light up the wall in the background to separate Drew a little bit more. Uh, but once we got on set, we kind of went for something a little bit moodier. So we took a light mat for uh, RGB and we put it all um, just deep, deep red. And we had that on a C stand coming in right over on a 90 degree angle on the right side of him uh, and then we just added like a nice little flickering strobing effect to the whole thing and that's the result that you pretty much see here the last lighting setup in here very simple um, this is gonna be the the final hurrah if you will this is when drew comes in and he uh, essentially my phone is ringing my phone is ringing in the middle of a YouTube video please hold Mike I'm explaining to the audience right now how we did drew max video Just, just say what's up, bro. Hello, everyone. This is Mikey Mike from La Jolla, California, and I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm here. All right. So the last lighting setup. Let's go right back into it. Uh, for this one is going to be the whole climactic ending of this music video. Uh, the scene where Drew essentially destroys the mannequin, which we had a little bit of a hiccup there. <laughs> But let's go over the lighting for that. So we had the same setup. We had the Ari Sky panel overhead on the whole GoPro setup. Same thing as number one, only we balanced it to daylight. And then uh, we took a quasar on the right hand side of the mannequin over here. You can't really see it. And I had it dial, I had Valentine our gaffer dial it over to tungsten. Uh, and this is what we call their classic salt and pepper uh, lighting setup where you have the nice um, contrast between daylight and tungsten and it just created a really nice dynamic look uh, so we have a really nice soft look here with a little bit of shadows um, so overall I'm really happy with how the lighting came out on this one All right, so that's it for today, guys. If you genuinely like the content that you see on my channel here, please consider subscribing. It helps me out. I'm trying to grow the channel, spread out some wealth, some knowledge to you guys going forward in your productions. Uh, let me know if there's any other things that you guys were wondering about how we did on this production or any other videos you want me to make in the future. I'm doing my best between work and, uh, and life to try and make some more YouTube content. So we'll have some more stuff coming soon. I appreciate everybody who's subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Again, this is Sean at Venture Art House signing out.